You're watching Rogers TV. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. The opinions expressed in the following programs are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers Cable or Rogers TV. Okay. Hi everyone and welcome to the Art of Culture. My name is Althea Ali, I'm your host. Uh, today we have a special guest in our studio. His name is Aaron Sunarine. He is a professional musician and teacher. Aaron, welcome. Thank you so much, Althea. And uh, yeah, thank you for having me here on the Art of Culture and uh, representing Steel Pan and the culture of Trinidad and Tobago. Nice, nice, it's amazing. So tell me a little bit about yourself, um, a little bit about the history of the Steel Pan as well. Yeah, so again, my name is Aaron Sunarine. I also go by the name of Love Sound. That's my performance name, and that's because I love all types of sounds when it comes to music. And I actually started playing when I was about four or five years old and started making noise on different types of instruments, the congas, steel pans, and the drums. And uh, I just took a found interest on the steel pan and uh, just representing Trinidad and its culture is just profound for me, especially as an Indian. You know, we don't really get noticed on the steel pan a lot. And, you know, talking about the steel pan, you know, it actually developed before the steel pan. They used to use um, hollowed out bamboo sticks, which they called bamboo tambu. And they would hit this on the ground and they would pick up different scrapers and irons from cars and different uh, whatever materials they can make sounds of. And in about 1936, 1937, they came up with the oil drums, which was left behind by the uh, Army Reserve. And uh, these empty drums were just left behind again. They're hitting these instruments and stuff. And one of the instruments that they first came up with was the dudup. And why it was called the dudup is because one sound sounded like duh, and the other sounded like dup. So dudup, a dudup, a dudup. So they'll go around playing all these different drums, and eventually, uh, there was a few guys, pioneers, that came up with what they called the ping pong pan. So it had about two notes, two, three, and then four notes, and they started playing songs like Mary Had a Little Lamb and easy nursery rhymes like that. And it wasn't until, I think, 1943, 45 or so, where uh, Ellie Manette um, actually took the steel pan. So before, the steel pan used to come up this way and have the belly on top. Okay. And then Ellie Manette actually sunk the steel pan to get more notes. And uh, by doing so, he was able to get more notes and different ranges and different scales, therefore producing uh, a full range of notes and able to play different songs as well. Oh, that is so yeah. awesome. You know, <laughs> thank you for sharing that little no bit of problem. history. Um, I know that you know the, the steel pan is so prevalent in the Caribbean culture and in um, you know Caribana time and any of the festivals that we have here. Um, so that that is so amazing that you're able to play and share. And I think we have a few pictures uh, that you can talk about. Well, can you tell us what you were doing here in, in Yeah, New York? so this one is just uh, for a beach function, but uh, just like any function, for this one, you know, any live steel pan is, is beautiful. But to have a background like this, I believe it was uh, Lake Huron, actually. And uh, just playing for somebody's anniversary or birthday party and just lifting up the, uh, the energy and the atmosphere with the sounds of the steel pan. It's the vibrations of the notes just brings everybody alive, right? <laughs> That's amazing. And you know, a lot of people just think about the steel pan being just solely Caribbean. And yeah. it, it's, it's not. It could be used in a wealth of different ways. Absolutely, um, yes. You know, teachings, it could be used for uh, reception events, it could be used for, you know, you were at the um, 2023 multicultural event yes. where you taught about the steel pan and we actually had um, different political figures there trying to play the steel yes, pan yeah, as well, yeah, so yeah. that was amazing. I think we have a next photo we could share. Yeah, so this one is for a, a wedding event 
nice uh, summer occasion, beautiful venue, and again, bring in the uh, Caribbean vibes. And I think for some occasions like this, uh, people ask or request songs. So sometimes I'm learning new songs as well on the go. And I think for this one, I had to learn a few new songs. And you can see I'm smiling away while I'm playing. <laughs> Awesome, and I think we have another if I, uh, another picture we can share. Oh yes, this was either Diwali Fest or Chutney Fest, where I'm playing. Uh, uh, either for Diwali Fest, it would be bhajans, and so if it was uh, Chutney Fest, then I'm playing more the Indian and Chutney kind of songs. But th that was with uh, one of the Toronto Indian Chutney groups, crossover groups that uh, I was playing with. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. It's amazing how you could really showcase the different cultures with the steel pan. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. you have the Indian culture there, you have the Caribbean culture, you have uh, different celebrations that you could attend, religious functions too. Yes. You wouldn't typically think of using the steel pan for a religious function. Not always. Uh, yes. Yeah. So it's that, that's great that you're able to share that because, again, even my, for myself, I wouldn't have thought to put that together. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That, that's and awesome. You know what, sometimes if you think about it, the sounds of just say, if I was doing the bhajans and stuff with the harmonium and the steel pan, or if they have the tablas and stuff, the acoustics and all the different sounds coming together is just, it's beautiful. The timbre, that's what we call it, the timbre or the sound of the instruments coming together. It's just magnificent. And I think I may have the, the pronunciation. Is, is one called a, a tabla? A tabla. A tabla. Yeah. So that one is where they sit and they play. That's the Indian classical drum. And uh, oh, if you go back to the picture, actually, uh, you'll see that I have a little bongo set up there. I think my hands are kind of, kind of uh, playing on top there. So that one, I almost represent not like the tabla, but more like the tassa. So okay, yeah. with the uh, trinis and, the, you know, we have the tassa drum and stuff. So sometimes I'll actually roll and play the bongos or the timbali like a tassa drum or almost like a dolak, which is the side the drum. Side. Yeah, yeah, right? Okay. So I'll play those drums in accompaniment with the steel pan and play um, both almost simultaneously. Yeah. Well, you've oh, seen me in action a couple of times, right? I, so. I did, I did. It's actually really wonderful to hear, and it's so uplifting when you hear it. Uh, it. It really is an incredible experience. And I think we have another photo that we can share. Oh, yeah, the uh, distillery district. So this is when they uh, were now starting the uh, Show Love T.O. You can see it there in the background. And uh, to be honest, this was, I think, in the height of COVID. I think things were now starting to open back up and stuff like that. And uh, so luckily, I'm without mask here yeah. on this picture because uh, I was by myself. But you can see the pan is all decorated in a uh, little tinsel and everything. I got the bongos there for the little, what I call spice. You know our West yeah. Indian flavor. <laughs> we like to put green seasoning and, and put stuff in our food. That's my green seasoning and the spice I for my instruments. That's what I think of it as. Love the outfit though, yeah. I gotta oh, say. Oh yeah, the outfit of course, right? <laughs> and again, you gotta go out. <laughs> well again, representation of Christmas. Yes, That is yes. awesome. Wrapped up in the joy, right? <laughs> Wouldn't think of doing that for Christmas. And again, you know, anyone out there who, you know, was thinking, oh, well, it's, it's mostly for the Caribbean. You got to be, you know, in the islands or have some sort of theme about, you know, Caribbean to be playing this. Well, no, you no, don't. No, 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 absolutely not. And here I was actually playing more Christmas songs. And some of them maybe had a little reggae style and stuff, but mostly majority of them were classic Christmas songs. You know, a few pop songs here and there, but... Uh, yeah, give it the occasion. That's that's what I what I do. I I play, I play to the occasion. Yeah. So when did you get started playing? Uh, again, when I was about four or five years old. So my dad, luckily, he was playing in a steel pan band called D Squad, which was one of the first bands back in the '80s to be around. A little more independent band. So I was around with them and Afropan, which is one of the bigger bands in Toronto. They've been around since the 70s. Yeah. And uh, so I started off there and just fooling around. And I actually started off on the tenor or the soprano pan, which is a single one. So sometimes you'll see a lot of the solo musicians playing steel pan. They have one drum. So that is what we call the soprano. And uh, that one, I, I started off playing actually one of the original drums 
for those of you who know about Steel Pan, it was the Invaders uh, Soprano, which has a really large, I think it's an F or F sharp in it, and it's one of the first prototypes for the Soprano. And uh, my uncle, uh, Wayne Griffith, he actually gave me that pan to say, it's very hard. Yeah. If he learns this, he'll be good he for any it. other <laughs> instrument or any other steel drum that he learns. So I learned that, and then I seen uh, a lot of my uncles and, and you know family friends playing the double seconds here. And it looks better. Two drums, you know, it looks a little bit cooler. And I used to take two soprano drums and pretend it was the, the uh, alto pan, not knowing that it was something different. So the soprano pan only has about two to two and a half octaves. It has about 32 to 36 notes, but uh, this pan has about three octaves. So it goes a little bit lower uh, in depth. So if you think about a piano, yeah. um, lengthwise, you could go a little bit lower on the notes and then come up a little bit higher on the notes, if you think of it like that. Yeah. But uh, so eventually, my dad was like, you know what, we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna get him the alto pan, and then that was it, I fell in love with the alto pan, but uh, my interest was really noticed when I was, uh, I was told by my dad that I was practicing. He told me, here, go and practice, do what you're doing. And my ear intuitively picked up um, a song. You mind if I actually play it? Uh, we'll play it after, but yeah, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the history and then we'll, we'll go into play because I, I do want to like yeah, okay, <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually one of the first songs was uh, Joy to the World. So I was just playing a C major scale backwards and intuitively my, uh, my ear picked it up. I'm like going backwards and I went upstairs to my dad and I'm like, hey, I think this is a song. And I came downstairs and my dad is like, nah, he's, you know, he's a kid, whatever. And then I played it for him and it was Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord has. And then when he heard that, he's like, no, this kid has talent. We're putting him in music school or whatever he did after that for me. And yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. And I really like that you shared that story because it shows that how, you know, we can get our kids involved and we can get, you know, they can find the small joys and something that motivates them to learn. Yeah. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And then for, for you, I, I think you had talked about being in the musical world. Yes. Um, and, and having that experience. How do you think that that has changed your life? Oh, tremendously, because not only was I part of the steel pan community, um, I was lucky enough to be part of the jazz community, and um, I went to Humber College Community School, again, at the age of like five, six, where I started ORF, just playing like marimba and xylophone, uh, basic drums and stuff like that, nursery rhymes, and then eventually um, graduating and going there um, for my Bachelor of Arts where I studied for a little bit and then uh, I took my engineering at Trebis after but um, yeah just learning all types of different music I actually studied classical piano for a moment as well I studied the uh, timpanis, marimbas, I took my Royal Conservatory in uh, classical snare drum and stuff like that so uh, yeah it's pretty intense That's amount amazing. of training but uh, it goes well coming back to the steel pan because everything now I've learned, I could take it to the steel pan and now what I've learned, I could give back now that I'm a teacher for the TDSB, for the I could show them uh, what I've learned now and yeah, give what. So we'll take a little bit of a break and then we'll come back with learning the steel pan and talking more about you know, your journey with the steel pan. Sure, yeah, no awesome. problem, thank you. Thank you. On Rogers TV, we have a reality show like no other. It has a great cast of characters. Some you may have even helped land the role. Each episode has something different. Plans are devised, decisions are made, votes are cast, and money is spent. It's local reality TV that you won't want to miss. And it's exclusive to Rogers Cable customers. Catch your municipal council coverage on Rogers TV. Visit rogerstv.com for broadcast details. This is 
Rogers TV. Well, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, uh, we are in studio with Erin. Uh, this is the Art of Culture, and I'm your host, Althea Ali. And for those of us coming back, uh, we're going to be here with Erin. Uh, he's going to be teaching us about the steel pan, playing the steel pan, and a little bit about the history and how he got started. And for everyone who missed it, I did an amazing job during the break, but you just missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're going to catch her in concert one day, you never know. <laughs> so, when we were talking before, I had mentioned uh, that I learned Joy to World. So, yeah. you know, again, my dad had told me, i got to practice my scales, i got to do all this stuff. So I was just practicing the scale, and then for some reason, I was playing it backwards, and I just kept playing that, and... I run upstairs, I'm like, Dad, I got this song, whatever. He's like, nah, I don't know what you're talking about. And then I play it for him. He's like, that's joy to the world, that's, you know, whatever. And then that was it after that. I uh, took lessons, and now I'm here. <laughs> you know, it is amazing that you're able to share that. And I think that, you know, we as parents, we sometimes need to take a step back and just listen and give our kids the benefits of benefit of the doubt because you never know where it will go. Yeah, you, exactly. And, and here you are, a true <laughs> testament of it, and now you're teaching children. Yes, yes, you know? yes. That's amazing. And it all started because of your passion for, you know, to wanting to learn this. You hearing your, your family, your dad playing, and you're thinking, you know, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. incredible. So do you want to teach us a little bit about the notes? Sure. So right now we actually have no stickers or no letter names on the steel pan, and that's because I ripped them off. So I, uh, when I first started, there was letter names, so that way I can locate where I'm playing. Mm -hmm. So with this pan, the alto pan, we have alternate notes. So if I was going each note individually from the lowest to the highest, I would start on F sharp, and I would go hand to hand, and drum to drum as well. And then backwards. So. That's neat. Yeah, so that is actually what we call a chromatic scale, and that's going individually from note to note, from lowest to highest. So practicing different scales, what we call scales, is uh, basically determining what type of sound or what type of mood you want to play. So like this scale. The whole tone, it feels like you're in a trance, like you want to go into a dream. You know. You have different scales like that. You have some that's. Some that's, you know, sad and again. You know what it reminds me of too? It reminds me of, um, remember the, the musical, The Nutcracker? Yeah, it does, yeah. If you listen to it, it's some of the, the rhythm and it really does sound like yeah, a steel yeah, pan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, again, as you were mentioning, you could play all types of different uh, music on here and I think while we're uh, on break I was coming I was fooling around and uh, I was like uh... yeah I felt like Macaulay Culkin I needed to run home right? or... yeah <laughs> and then you could play That's awesome. That's awesome. So when you teach um, 
you put back the stickers and do you use uh, do you use like a musical so notes to show them? So within the TDSB, yes, uh, we actually have almost a full range of steel drums. So we have the soprano, the alto, we have the uh, cello or the guitar, which is a little bit larger, and then mm -hmm. we have the bass drums, which is almost a full size uh, oil drum, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, for those, yes, we do have the 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 notes or the letter names for them so they can see where they are playing. There are some uh, steel drums where it doesn't have the note names, so we put the more uh, experienced students, the one that should be paying attention or <laughs> should have been paying attention in the classes, we put them there, or the troublemakers, we put them there so they figure it out on their own. <laughs> hey, and it's a cool way to get them involved Absolutely. Uh, and to keep learning. Yes. You know, Music is in every single culture. Yes. It is the one yeah. thing that we share. We have we have food and we have music. Yes. It's the thing that we share, and it's the thing that you know. It's it brings so much joy. It's used for teaching. It is so universal, yeah. and it's so amazing when we are able to share our passion and share our love for for you know music or food or whatever it is, and to bring it down from generation to generation to generation. Yes. I yeah. really, really, really love your story and the story that you, you know, the story you shared about your dad and about your family being in, in music and you being able to share this and to do this. So do you have plans of maybe opening up uh, like a teaching studio or anything like that? If the time permits, yes, definitely. But now this is actually my first year within TDSB and uh, teaching steel pans. So we'll see where this takes me. But uh, I've actually taught privately before. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, was, it was interesting. But with uh, the steel pan, it's a little bit more difficult because not everybody might like this type of particular steel drum or steel pan. They might like the single drum, or they might like the cello, which you just. For that one, you do more strumming. So you don't actually play melodies and stuff on the cello or on the guitar pan. And then the bass, you play actually single notes okay. instead. So it really depends on the individual and what type of uh, steel drum instrument they want to play. Mm -hmm. But uh, I always tell them either learn in the pan yard or learn in school while you have the chance. So <laughs> how do they actually get started with this and how do they uh, kind of learn what it is that they like and what they don't like? What are some tips that you have? Again, I would say if they're not already learning or have the chance to learn within the school system, um, the best way is the pan yard. Go f see, you could go on uh, Google, wherever, or Facebook, and locate uh, the steel pan yards within your area and just go there during summertime. Or some run um, throughout the year, you could go and check them out. And then, you know, you could try to fit in. See, try the instruments. See mm -hmm. which one you like. You know, you might not like one, you might like all, right? And it's funny because when I'm within the steel pan orchestra, I don't want to play steel pan. Oh. Yeah, I want to be part of the engine room. And the engine room is the drums, the congas, the iron, the scratcher, the congas, timbales, and everybody dancing and grooving okay. and feeling the truck. That's where I like to be. When I was oh. smaller, okay. I would play the pan, that's where I learned, but when I'm in the orchestra, you won't find me playing pan. I'm, I'm shy away, I'll put I my didn't... sticks down and I, I want to play drums. <laughs> oh, oh, that's awesome. So are you, is it more relating to um, people who play the drums already, that they could easily get into this? Um, yes and no, rhythmically yes, but when you're dealing with... Um, <laughs> notes like this and it's not uh, a percussive instrument where it's just hitting um, you're dealing with notes you have to understand um, not necessarily theory but you have to understand notes and patterns of notes and the sounds that you're creating as well right so not everybody can go from pans to percussion or from percussion to steel pan so yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That That is very amazing. So some of us who are not as musically inclined as I am can kind of slowly get in there and then try and, and learn a few different 
uh, different notes. I'm wondering, can you, so can you teach me quickly on some of the ones that you have? Yeah. Like very basic. So here, <laughs> grab this, Okay. right? So we're gonna play these three notes here, okay? Sorry, on this side, on okay. this side, so. What? Yeah, so <laughs> one, two, one. Yeah, now one, two, three, four, two here. Right, and then again. See? So four here. One, two, three, four. One, two here. E, D, and then roll here. There we go. Then oh, we had I a little it. lamb. I killed it. <laughs> Good job. All right. Thank you. Well, so as some of you can see who have never tried this before, it's fairly easy. And I hope you don't get uh, intimidated by it because it can be intimidating. And it can be you see everyone playing and it sounds so amazing. And then you're starting for the first time and you're, you're sounding a little bit like, what, what just happened there? But I hope you don't get intimidated by it and I hope you do give it a try. It, it is quite amazing and it's amazing to actually be part when you learn it and be part of that musical world. Yes, yes, And yes, yes, just yes. keep learning. And you know what, again, when you're in the ensemble and you see kids, adults, middle aged, whatever, and everybody's dancing, having a good it's time, so smiling, amazing. there's no care in the world. There's no stress, there's no pain, there's no Bills, there's no nothing. Everybody's just in the moment enjoying. And music, as you said, Amazing. with music and food, that's what brings the culture together. Because some, somebody will bring a little pay or a little, you know, something, and we're eating a little corn soup, whatever. Now we're playing. Everybody's good. Every, you know, again, that worry, that stress-free environment of playing music and just letting go, that's... My main st stress reliever as well is That is amazing. Music. And, <laughs> you know, it is... It is a fact that music can help with, um, you know, different ailments that you know even the senior population has, so dementia or any sort of illnesses, and even just pick people up, you know, out of depression, out of that. And coming out of COVID, I mean, we heard so many stories of, you know, you know, mental health concerns and that are increasing. So I'm glad that even this can be used as an opportunity to uplift yourself, up, uplift the community, and uplift each other and I'm so glad that you're able to come in studio with I'm us glad today. that I was able to be part of it and yeah, just to go just... on what you were saying about the uh, the older community I actually play for a lot of uh, senior homes and retirement homes throughout the week all throughout the city that's amazing and I go and oh. I play an hour or two for them and you know what I actually prefer playing for them than any regular <laughs> awesome. body because they appreciate it yeah, you know the do. love for it and yeah it, cheers them up and brings them a lot of joy. Thank yes. you for allowing me to share in your joy and I hope yeah. you can play us out. Sure, absolutely. Connect with us by visiting our website or email us at comments at rogerstv.com. Hi, can I take your order? Hello? Oh, hey. Wait, what was the question? Let me guess. One driving high combo.